How's it going guys? Welcome back to the Weeb Lounge. Once again, I am Nick and in this character spotlight, it's Death. And her name is Lily. Death has Pecos. Death can't come soon enough. Okay, that was either a really dark statement, a really bad statement, or kind of funny. I mean... You can think of it other ways too, but I'll leave that to your guys' imagination. Rank 28, maxed out, level broke. We did all the things for Lily here. Let's go ahead and get into the skills. Now, we're going to start with this one because she has an extra skill, and this makes her incredibly, incredibly unique. It The extra skill is Fallen Feather. It makes Lily fly. It is basically a permanent buff, but I call it semi-permanent because it can be wiped. It only activates once at the very start of the battle. So she's up there flying around and everything. What exactly does her flight do? Okay, this is going to be a little complicated. So let me try to spread this out a little bit. When in flight, Lily is not affected by ranged attacks that don't specify her as the target. So like, let's say I have some kind of small area effect attack, right? And it hits the ground. It's going to hit like three of my characters or something targets nozomi or whatever she taunted yay good timing well lily would normally kind of be in that area and be affected by it but since she's flying she's up over there somewhere she doesn't get affected by it now if that same thing targeted her specifically yes it would hit her but here's the caveat to that it would hit her but nobody else it's like while she's flying, she's on her own playing field, separate from the rest of the characters. That's about as good as I can explain it with that. Now, full AoE attack stuff that affects the whole field, she's still going to get hit by that. Uh, basic attacks, even, even just normal ranged attacks. Unless she's the primary target, she's not affected by it. But there is a little bit of a... with her flight or whatever that I'll get into, which is why we're not throwing her in the arena anytime soon. All right, let's get to the normal skill. Skill number one, Flower Remnants, increases the attack power of all allies in her immediate vicinity. The range, and you guys are gonna have to judge this, the range is basically between the frontline Sumugi to the rear Ayumi. Somewhere in there. Seems like a fairly good range, but it doesn't cover everyone in the back. It doesn't cover everyone in the front. It's a thing. You guys figure that one out. I'm going to have to do some testing or something. Skill number two, Black Wings. It is a single target physical damage attack and physical defense debuff. Now, the damage isn't all that. It's, you know, it's decent or whatever. The physical defense buff sucks for now. About to get into that. EX skill, boring as usual. Physical attack power. If you happen to have her at five stars, which I very highly recommend it. Take her to five stars. It'll do a little bit more. So, yay. They could have just made her EX skill, like, light. Plus extra. You didn't really have to merge it, now did you? Union Burst. Now this is where it gets even more important. The Shadow Split Scythe. A large single target physical damage attack and shadow split. The more shadows on the field, the more damage the attack does. Up to 2.8 times normal, give or take. It also summons up to a maximum of two shadows that will literally do everything that Lily does except for the Union Burst itself. Think Nanika. Nanika and her clone. The clone literally does everything that Nanika does, has all the same stats, the same buffs, the same this, that, the other, whatever. It just does not Union Burst. Same thing for her, only you get two shadows. Complete perfect copies. The shadows do not fly, though. Shadows do not fly. Keep that in mind. And the shadows, like Lily herself and even the shadows are a little on the squishy side. They're offense, so there's also that. Oh, man. So, on the surface, it sounds like this character could be pretty powerful, but let's go ahead and throw her into combat. She will make quick work of it. I'm probably going to have to go through it a couple of times. Do I just throw her here so I get a thing? Oh, just do one. She'll be able to handle the hard mode on her own. But I'm about to slow it down. Okay. See, she already took flight. You got the little swirls around her, so you know she's flying, doing her thing, and whirling with the scythe. So it's like Death is doing the cute twirl with the scythe. Oh, 
You didn't really get to see the shadows, did you? Because you saw Monomas, you already killed the thing, so you get to do nothing. I am really bad at showcasing characters, ain't I? Like, get, get smacked or something. Hit the thing. There you go. Just want to see the shadows for a little bit. I do like this. Okay. One note about her flight. And, okay, maybe I was wrong. The shadows were flying. Okay, never mind. I take that back. Shadows can fly. <laughs> that might be the very first action they do when they come out. Let's see that again, because you got the swirls there. So the shadows, the very first thing they might do is fly. And if that's the case, oh, crap. I was under the impression they don't. But they're flying. Okay. God, that was a lot of damage. A stupid amount of damage. I'm liking this character more and more and more. Okay, so the one thing with her flight is that it can be canceled, but the chances of that happening, I think, are going to be pretty slim. It's really going to depend on the boss. Let's go here and get a Tomaki or something. Basically, she has to be the target of attack, a spe specified target of an attack that does some kind of incapacitation thing, you know, like, you know, a stunt, basically. She has to get stunned. The stun will knock her out of the air. She's on the ground and she's just another member of the team. She's not flying around trying to avoid all the things. It just is what it is. So that's the only caveat with that. But it's not really a big downside or anything because how often outside of arena does that happen? You know, we're going to be talking like bosses that do full field AOE stuns or something along those lines. That's what you're going to end up having to do. Or some really RNG component or something. Whatever. Chances are she's not going to get hit by it except for in really specific situations. So, there's that. And the shadows, the shadows do a ridiculous amount of damage, which brings me back to the defense down debuff. The defense down debuff only does like 54 defense down, physical defense down. It's not much. But she has two shadows. The two shadows will rotate these debuffs along with her. So, 54 times 3. 162 did i math right i think i did whatever but that ends up becoming actually generally uh, significant not as good as pure proper debuffers but good enough to be like a sub support little extra you know there's people that do those physical defense debuffs it's like if she only did 54 it's basically worthless okay it's it's barely going to be noticeable if anything but three times that definitely going to be worth something and it's worth it if you guys like, share, subscribe, and hit that notification button. Haha, <laughs> segue. Don't use the ticket. I'm trying to showcase stuff. Don't point to using tickets. I'm stupid. Okay. So the big question. This character is now in the normal gacha. She's not a limited character. You can get her whatever. Do I recommend going for her? I think her utility is going to go far above and beyond what the current status is. She is double S tier in her boss battles, okay? Which is like, for most characters to come out, they come out and it's like, oh, it's double S tier boss. And everything else is garbage. Okay, in her case or whatever, you know, Luna Tower, she's like an S in Arena. She, no, don't do the Arena. Some other stuff, whatever, right? But I have a really good feeling that she's going to start getting combined with other things that are just going to be ridiculous. And I'm going to like this. <laughs> uh, like, imagine, like, a year from now or whenever it happens, you know, assuming it doesn't shut down like global. It won't. Don't be worried. It's fine. But, you know, she gets her unique equipment. Well, that's going to generally upgrade, you know, skill one to become something else or whatever. You know, the increase the attack power could do something else like redo her flight or allow an extra clone. Won't allow an extra clone. Extra clone to be just... If she had one more clone, this would be overpowered all to hell. Triple S tier, kind of stupid, okay? So I doubt they're going to allow her an extra clone, but you never know. You never know. So, is it worth spending on this character? Mm. Without more information on clan battles and such, I'm not terribly sure that you should spend money on her. Yes, I think everybody should go for her. You should get her. You should try get those extra shards. You should level her up all kind of crazy. I think everybody is a character that everybody should have. But I'm not terribly sure if you should be spending money on her considering that she's not limited. And it doesn't seem at least just yet that she's that super crazy important. I think she will be eventually. So I guess I'm going to have to say it's your guys' call on this one. She's good to have if you spend money on her. 
I say that's okay. If you don't, I say that's okay too. So this is a situational one based on your guys' situation. Do you want to spend the money or not? Do you feel comfortable doing it? That's on you for this one. SS tier versus boss fights. S tier in the Luna Tower. Everything else is kind of meh. But potential is there for some crazy crap to happen with this character. Time will tell. And we'll catch you in the next video.